Hey everyone, so Joe Rogan recently had on uh, former President Donald Trump and they talked about a whole variety of things. They spent quite a lot of time talking. One of the topics that they talked about was uh, releasing the JFK assassination files, all the classified documents, but another uh, area that they delved into a little bit was uh, UFO disclosure, talking about what is secretly being hidden by the government and sort of uh, revealing and exposing some of those uh, classified files. And uh, President Trump is not the first person, uh, first president to talk about this. This is something that, uh, first of all, when Gerald Ford was a congressman, he put forth to have a certain degree of of disclosure. Uh, Jimmy Carter had claimed in the 1970s when he was campaigning that he had seen a UFO. Ronald Reagan made numerous references in the UN saying that that uh, there would be world peace. All the nations of the world would come together if there was the perceived threat of an alien invasion. So different presidents have made reference to uh, UFOs and UFOs di UFO disclosure before, along with uh, veteran astronauts and other historic figures. But let, take a look at what they say, what President Trump says and in, in, in the discussion with Joe Rogan, and then we'll talk about the Jewish perspective on aliens. Take a look at this. There's a lot of interest in uh, the uh, people coming from space, you know. Yes. And I know you're interested oh, in I'm that. Oh, very too. interested in that. How much do they tell you about that? A lot. Really? Yeah. What do they tell you? How much can you tell? So I... How's that work? Is it like super I top I secret? I can tell, you know. Tell think, me. Well, based on Hunter Biden, I can say whatever the hell yes. I want, right? But no. But I interviewed a few people. It's never been my thing, I have to be honest. I, I have never been a believer. I have people that Area 51 or whatever it is, mm -hmm. I think it's the number one tourist attraction in the whole country or something. Area 51 in Las Vegas. Do you know that, right? Sure. I know what it is. So anyway, but it's a big tourist thing. So I interviewed jet pilots that say they saw something. If you saw them, you'd love to have a museum. I've had a couple in here. Commander yeah. David Fravor, yeah. uh, I had him in, the, who had that sighting in 2004. Very, yeah. very compelling with visual, very visual compelling. video evidence, radar evidence. I Ryan Graves. I don't believe his name, but I, I interviewed jet pilots that uh, were solid people. Perfect. I mean, great pilots, great everything. And they said, we saw things, sir, that were were very strange like a round ball but it wasn't a comet or a meteor it was something and it was going four times faster than an f-22 which is a very fast plant you know and it was round um which is an, in theory a great shape so like. when you were talking to these people was was this something that you were compelled to have conversations no. about was this your personal interest no, a, a little bit it, it's not a great interest for me but it's a little interest i get that question as much as almost any question do you think that we have aliens coming you know flying around or whatever what do you think there's no reason not to. I mean, there's no reason not to think that Mars and all these planets don't have life, you know, because... Well, we, Mars, we've had probes there and well, rovers, we, yeah, and but, I don't yeah. think there's any life there. Well, maybe it's life that we don't know, but maybe Well, it's maybe there was life there at one point in time. This yeah. is a speculation about Mars, that Mars had a, 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 an atmosphere at one point in time a long time ago that could support life. It also, yeah. also had large bodies of water, but we've had no evidence of even bacterial life that exists on Mars. But... The it's not been a big vast. thing for me. I mean, when I looked at what China did to this, admit they would have never done it with me. Where they put the balloon up, mm -hmm. and a lot of people thought, and a lot of people thought for a little while that that was right. you know, one of these things. So, well, that's you know, a lot of the speculation too. That some of these drones that hover be. over battleships that these are Chinese drones, and that, that they're not UFOs. They could be also. There's some super sophisticated. But I did interview, uh, uh, let's say three or four guys that, and without tremendous interest, if you had them. As I said, you'd love to have me as your children. Solid, beautiful people. They said, sir, there's something there. You know, they've... There's they something said there. Said it, yeah. Yeah, I've talked to quite a few They're of them. They're not conspiracy I've, guys. Well, I mean, the just the Commander David Fravor thing in 2004 off the coast of San Diego, they clocked that thing going yeah. from 50,000 feet above sea level to 50 in a second. <laughs> yeah. They don't know what that's, it is. It's tough to beat. Yeah, they, they saw something in the water. It was hovering over that something that was making a disturbance in the water. They got video evidence of this thing. The, the two different fighter jets f with pilots in them saw it. 
There's, you know, visual evidence, photographic evidence, video evidence, radar evidence, whatever the hell it is, it moves in a way that would turn a human being into jello if yeah. they were inside of it. The G force, no one would survive. Oh, so like, what is that? And we don't. They, it doesn't have a heat signature. They don't know what their propulsion system was. But when you fly in some of these jets, these pilots have to be in great shape. Oh yeah, I flew when with the Blue Angels once. Yeah. As yeah, an I got example. to fly. I guess and it's those an F eighteen. And those are older machines. And they're crazy. When you when you fly in some of these things, oh my it's god, amazing. Yeah, but yeah, you gotta I can be, imagine. You got to be special. So. Uh, it's a very cute exchange. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about what the Jewish view of extraterrestrial life. First of all, when it comes to a lot of these uh, the pictures and the, the evidence that's been seen, there's, there is a lot of speculation, not just that it's extraterrestrial, meaning coming from another planet. Some people think uh, interdimensional, uh, that, that there's uh, interdimensional uh, beings visiting us, because why would some uh, other creature from across the universe, why would they land on planet Earth? What would be the, what would be the point? What are they after? There are a lot of different ideas and speculations. One of, one of the down-to-earth practical speculations is that some other country has uh, very highly advanced drone systems or whatnot, because a lot of, these a lot of the time the these uh, sightings are near military bases or battleships or uh, amongst fighter planes. And so there's, there is a lot of speculation out there as to what these crafts and things could be without, a, a without attribution to uh, any sort of extraterrestrial alien life. But what would be the Jewish view of that? Or what, what would a faith-minded person uh, think if there were alien life or the possibility for there to be alien life out there? So uh, in Jewish tradition, there, there's varying viewpoints. So but one of the first people to sort of give perspective is Rabbi Chazdoi Kreshkash, who was one of the Rishonim, one of the early sages. And he said that it's a possibility that there's life out there on other planets uh, in the same way that we say in, in Psalm 145, that your kingship is a kingship amongst all worlds, right? Amongst we, 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 we translate it sometimes as for all eternity, but your kingship is a kingship amongst all worlds. Usually we think about that as like spiritual worlds or realms, but uh, the, the, the idea is that it could be also talking about physical worlds. Why not? Uh, then Rabbi Kreshkash's student, Rabbi Yosef Albo, said that no there's there is no there is no uh way for there to be life on other planets and the reason that's given is because if you look through the biblical text you see the centrality of the human beings right that even when the sun the moon and the stars are created in the beginning of the book of genesis it says why were they created to give light upon the earth there's a uh, there is a anthropocentric, a human-centered uh, vision of what the universe looks like from a biblical standpoint. So if you are a believing person, if you are someone that takes the what the Torah says, what the Bible says as factually true, then it's some it's, it's outside the scope of belief because humanity and planet Earth are the center of of everything and what would be uh it what would be the point of having some creature on another planet somewhere out there uh that that wouldn't have to do with planet earth in other words everything else is a backdrop to humanity and making our mission achievable and possible all, all the all the other planets in the solar system are in just the right place uh, and we're in just the right place in the galaxy in order for human life to exist so everything is kind of set up for to facilitate human life what would be the reason that some there would be some life out there and so that again that's a different perspective a different viewpoint then the the kabbalist um, Rabbi Eliyahu Horowitz writes in his Sefer Habris uh, a few hundred years ago that he sort of makes like a balance between them. Says, yes, on the one hand, there is the possibility of there being life out there. On the other hand, the distinction between that sort of life, whatever it would be, and life here on planet Earth is that the human being is central, meaning that it has free will. When the Torah when the Bible says that we are created, B'Tselem Elohim, in the image of God, one of the ways that that's understood 
is that that means that a person is created with free will. Like, like in the same way that God uh, can make a decision uh, un, unhindered by any external forces or choices, uh, nature or nurture doesn't play any role in God's uh, decision making. And so too, the human being has free will in that we can transcend our nature and nurture through the, pro through the power of free will and, and still make an unhindered decision. And so free will is what makes us Fitzelum Elohim and what makes us unique in the universe. And so being created in the image of God is, is unique to the human being. And that means that free will is unique to the human being. And so what this means is that even if there were other creatures, entities out there, that we would be solely the ones that had free will, that can make these sorts of uh, moral decisions. Uh, it, it, that's, that's not necessarily something that is uh, bad or doesn't mean that these creatures can't be uh, sophisticated in some way. Uh, angels uh, in our tradition don't have free will either. They only do the will of their creator. So an angel in, in many ways is a, right, it's a spiritual being far, far highly uh, superior in in certain sense than the human being, yet it ha doesn't have free will. That's why in the prophecies of Ezekiel, for example, when there's uh, angelic depictions, they are depicted as animals because animals also don't have free will. And essentially, an animal and an angel, from a spiritual essence standpoint, are exactly the same thing. That's why they're depicted in the form of prophecy in the form of an animal. And so, again, the, the sort of balance between is that perhaps it would be out there, uh, but they wouldn't have free will. We are the only creatures in the universe that have free will. That is the sort of conclusive Jewish perspective on this, the, the way of balancing all other perspectives. One of the interesting things as well is that uh, the Lubavitcher Rebbe was, was asked on numerous occasions, particularly from uh, a Dr. Velvel Green. Dr. Velvel Green was working with NASA's exobiology program, and he, uh, he became religious, he became observant, and he wondered uh, if it was still worthwhile continuing his work, exobiology, meaning trying to find life on other planets with NASA. And he wrote into Lubavitcher Rebbe about is that is this a proper Jewish thing? Is this something that he should be embracing, or is it really kind of a waste of time? And so uh, the the answer that was given to him was like, you can continue looking. Well, why not continue looking? Uh, uh, you know, to the contrary, the, the more the more things that we discover brings greater glory to God. And and uh, at the end of the day, like, why limit God? Why think that God can only create? Uh, life and creatures and whatnot on planet Earth, why not try to find uh, more things that will bring about the greater glory of God? At the end of the day, though, on a practical level, even if we found un un uncontrover un uncontrovertible evidence that alien life did exist, like they land tomorrow in Times Square and it's like clear as day, according to everybody, that they are real, um, it wouldn't really affect, for, for a Jewish, from a Jewish standpoint, it wouldn't really affect all that much. It'd be very interesting. It'd be something that we'd you know want to read all about and find out about and and, and discover. But at the end of the day, uh, like it doesn't negate that God exists. It doesn't negate our mission as human beings in, in this world and our particular mission in the Jewish community as well to do all six hundred and thirteen of the commandments. This wouldn't negate any of that. And so after finding out tomorrow morning that they landed in Times Square, you know what I would do? I would do my morning prayers and put on my tefillin and continue uh, going about ritually as as I had you know, the, the day prior. So again, while it would be intriguing, it wouldn't really make all that much of a difference from a practical standpoint in our lives. God can create us, God can create anything in the universe. Why limit God? And that is that is sort of a general, uh, the, the at least the bullet points of the perspective from a Jewish vantage point on is there extraterrestrial life? If you'd like all the source material or to find out more about that sort of stuff, you can uh, consider looking at my, uh, getting my book on Amazon, A Jewish Guide to the Mysterious. It has a, a bit more information with all the source material, scientific, historical, and theological. And um, it's a good place to start. Anyway, uh, if you do enjoy this content overall, uh, I'd encourage you to please hit that subscribe button over there. 
and um, would love to continue the conversation. In the meanwhile, have a wonderful day, everybody, and uh, we'll all talk soon. Take care. Thank you.